We've had a strong 4.5 magnitude earthquake and a 2.4 aftershock in the Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas area, felt by thousands, over 3,500 have reported it to USGS. You can imagine tens of thousands have uh, felt it, and there's not that much of a population in the area. But this, if you look at the line stretching from Lake Superior down that way, you can see that that's exactly where we've had the earthquake activity. You can see on the upper 11 o'clock position, the uh, the, the uh, outline of the earth crack right there, okay, uh, under Lake Superior. Let's take a look at the size of Berkeley. Let's take this off. And uh, these are all the earthquakes, over, uh, all the earthquakes, even the ones above two and a half, two, um, two and a half. This one is the aftershock 2.4. And um, this one was about an hour beforehand, 4.5. Let's pan out a little. This is in uh, Oklahoma, the Kansas-Oklahoma border. Now, remember, uh, the Kansas earthquakes I made in the past showed that there's 11, at least 11 diamonds spewing volcanoes in Kansas, and they're finding more every few years, okay? The, the, they're explosive because they're uh, dikes of uh, diamonds spewing kimberlite volcanoes, and the gas that comes out is very explosive. So all of you there in Kansas in the past have reported feeling your house is shaking, booming sounds coming out from under the foundations of your house. It could be that you're near kimberlite volcanoes in Kansas. But uh, this is pretty big. And these are the recent earthquakes. The blue is today's earthquakes, and the yellow is just this past week. Everything older, they just take off the map. But uh, you can see that it's going along the uh, areas that we saw before on the crack. This is Lake Superior. And uh, from the yesterday's and the day before, we explained that there's a mantle plume. There's magma under the Great Lakes. It's like a horseshoe-shaped. and um, the western part goes like this. At one point, Lake Superior was uh, flush neighbor, you know, joined with uh, Wyoming. And this Great Plains area is stretching. I support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box. You can see a beautiful river there, the Missouri River. All rivers are fault lines, Mississippi River. Um, and this is stretching. Basically, the United States is stretching into three areas. It's the west, the uh, middle central area, and the east, which is sloughing off towards the um, southeast. We talked about this one, 2.2 uh, Tennessee earthquake yesterday. The Cleveland earthquakes, even though the USGS has them so low, Canada has them at 2.6 and 2.8. And uh, that horseshoe-shaped mantle has magma underneath since a billion years ago, when uh, North America was still joined to Europe. Now, this thing here goes under the, the, that part of the mantle, goes right like this, like this, like this, through Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, and then goes west. And the other part goes like this, under the Appalachians, the Smoky Mountains, and um, you know New Madrid Seismic Zone, which is actually New Madrid Rift Valley, okay? Because that's sloughing off. You have the Mississippi River, you have um, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, and the St. Lawrence River, Montreal. There's not much left to split off, and it's, it'll be moving off in the billion years or so later. Uh, it'll, it'll, it'll end up like this, Madagascar, which was part of East Africa at one point. Oh, what's this? Okay. Um, all right. So this is, this is not a small earthquake. And uh, 4.5 and the aftershock of 2.4. Okay, this is the 4.5. Uh, so far, 3,600 and some odd people reported to USGS, and um, let's go to the shake map. You can see what's happening there. Okay, this is Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas starts here. And uh, going back to well, the, the population density, not many there. Not many in the center of it, 
and yet over 3,600 have reported it to USGS, tens of thousands must have felt it. And um, let's go to our aerial. Okay. There you go. There's a nice crack right there. We have fault lines here. Uh, we don't have many fault lines in the east because of the fact that they're so old and we don't have many very big earthquakes. Uh, there's Mississippi River right there. And Lake Superior right here. Okay. And uh, that's the mantle plume like this, going like this and then like this, and the other one to the east here, in the Madrid seismic zone. And um, just to take a look at some of the Canadian earthquakes, because we don't have them showing on the USGS maps. Oh, this is what, what's this? Okay, that was a few days ago. All right, 3.0, that's Cascadia right there. And... Uh, that was yesterday, two magnitude uh, around there. So, okay, this is yesterday. The uh, a couple of days ago, you could, oh, 3.3. .3. Oh, that was okay. That was, that's old. That's January 4th. But, um, so they have older earthquakes here. You can see what's happening. So this one here, that's not a small earthquake. And uh, they, the USGS stops the frequencies there. But if we go to the uh, explanation, most of North America, east of the Rocky Mountains, has infrequent earthquakes here and there. Earthquakes are more numerous, for example, in the New Madrid seismic zone on southeastern Missouri and Charlevoix, Kamaruska, seismic zone, eastern Quebec, New York, New England, New York, Philadelphia, Wilmington Corridor, and elsewhere. But most of the enormous regions for the Rocky to Atlantic can go years without an earthquake large enough to be felt. And several U.S. states have never reported a damaging earthquake. Well, this was not small. Now, going back to the explanation. Earthquakes east of the Rocky Mountains, although less frequent than in the West, are typically felt over a much broader region than earthquakes of similar magnitude in the West, east of the Rockies, where we are, we're talking about now. An earthquake can be felt over an area more than 10 times larger than a similar earthquake magnitude on the West Coast, it would not be unusual for magnitude 4, we have 4.5 here, magnitude 4 in Eastern or Central America to be felt by a significant percentage of population in many communities more than 60 miles from its source, magnitude 5.5, more than 300 miles. So, uh, okay, this is what, that's the miles here, 50, 100, 200, 200, 300, 400. This is about four, five hundred miles square. Uh, I don't know. Was it felt over seven hundred miles, at least? I don't know. What, what can I tell you? Um, this is because it's softer here. The area here is softer, and this is also the uh, Great Plains area, which is stretching. As we said before, it's stretching because it has magma underneath, and that's why the area is stretching. And that's the mantle plume right here. But nobody talks about that. They don't talk about the mantle plume and the magma under the Great Lakes, which is a horseshoe shaped. And they don't talk about the Great Plains area stretching. As we said a billion years ago, Lake Superior was flush neighboring with, uh, you, uh, with uh, Wyoming. Wyoming, you know, Yellowstone. Okay, so all of you there, please be very careful of... Uh, this earthquake activity, we know that this is the activity here, this past day. Okay, they're smaller, of course. Um, and this one again, New Madrid seismic zone, 2.3 Missouri. Okay. Shallow, but uh, was this, uh, let's look at the shake map. I, I doubt they'll have it, it's too small. Yeah, they don't, they wouldn't have it, it's too small. Okay, and let's go back, wait a minute, top graphic, okay, Ozarks. Okay, so the activity there is not small, and be careful and alert because 4.5 is not small. We don't know if it's a foreshock. 
whatever. Hopefully it's the end of that. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.